that brings up another good point. Base hits with base hits win ball games. You never go broke making a profit. So if you get a deal and you know you can make 10%, like, like, oh, this is a no-brainer, I can make 10% of this safe deal, do it. We asked Slade Priest of Mississippi, who has bought and sold a ton of farms over the years, on what the common theme is when he buys a property right. I think there's some really great information if you're in the market to buy a farm. Here we go. And in Missouri, we have a different goal. We're flipping ground up there. Uh, it's kind of a retirement plan. We want, of course, we want a really bad to the bone hunting farm one day, but we want that really to bad to the bone hunting farm to be in an area where we have a lot of high end cash rent farms that we can, you know, we have other farmers doing, of course, but we, we can go hunt a little bit on them and, and t- keep an eye on them. Of course, we want a nice hunting place and a little lodge to, uh, to go stay on when we're up there. But the main goal is to have a bunch of properties, high-end cash rent barns paid for by the time we retire, you know, by flipping these other properties as a form of, you know, mailbox money retirement. You know, if we can find these farms we're making four, five, six percent on, by the time we retire, what kind of percentage is it going to be a lot higher? And then uh, I go sit in my lodge and, and pick up the money out the mailbox. Yeah, that's what everyone's dream. So, and I think that's something that I've talked to a lot of different people that have similar strategies. I think that it's so obscure to what most people are trained for. Like, you know, like uh, put away for that 401k. Like that's how most people mm-hmm. think. And then you're so passionate about dirt. P- pitch me on this. Let's say I'm, I'm a guy and you're not, you're not trying to change my mind, but tell me the benefits of what that strategy is. I trust land. I have educated myself on land, how it works, how you can make money off of things like that. If you sit out there and educated yourself about how to position yourself in the market, well, that's where you need to be. You need to be where you feel comfortable with. Most people, friends of mine included, oh, well, I just go give it to my financial advisor. He's a professional. I'm going to give him 30000 a year for the next so many years, and this is what I'm going to retire from. That's great. Uh, you know, that's putting a lot of faith into, you know, that guy and into the financial system. You know, they're, they're not making any more uh, dirt. That, the, that financial system is just a bunch of numbers on the screen. And I'm sure that it'll probably be fine in 30 years when we retire. But uh, that we're always gonna, the population is growing. We're always going to have to feed people. We're always going to have to house people, timber, food plot. I mean, uh, soybeans, <laughs> corn. You know, we're always going to have to uh, feed people. I understand land. I know how to make money on land. And in my experience, nobody financially can do. Uh, you know, I can't give somebody a hundred thousand dollars and what they can do, what I can do with land with the same hundred. Cause the way I operate, if I got a hundred, I can borrow 500 and, uh, you know, and then I'm just leveraging. Now it's high stakes gambling. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, I understand the risk return and things like that. And I'm, I mean, I'm in the land business, so I'm practicing what I'm preaching. Uh, everybody's level of risk is different. Mine's always been super high. Uh, but I'm pretty particular about what I buy. I've got an eye for this. This is what I trust. And I trust Slade more than I trust me giving my money to somebody else. And hey, at, the, at, at the end of the day, the good Lord, uh, you know, he, he, I feel like he's going to look after my family. He's done that thus far. And if, and if one day he decides I got to lose money on one, I've made money on a lot of them. So it's okay. Mm-hmm. So tell us about the deals that go really well. So like, what are some of those things that have in common? The, the main thing have in common is you buy it right. I mean, 100% of the time, you you buy right and, uh, you know, the market sets the price. You're not, just because you bought it and you want an extra $100,000 for it, that don't mean nothing. you got to buy it right, and then there's a couple of ways you can force value. Uh, just looking better, a property looking better. These days, a turnkey aspect, the world has gotten busier and busier. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, kids... Every kid seems like they play 150 baseball games or 47 golf tournaments or swim meets. The world is busier. So, so turnkey is huge. You know, somebody says, all I got to do is load my gun and come plant food plots. I'm in. The camp's there, the food plots there, you know, the road's there, whatever. Uh, so that's a, a huge uh, benefit. You know, just cleaning up and looking nice really, really helps help, help sell a place. And knowing what people look for, for instance. Um, stuff by national forest public ground that's huge so if you got 100 acres by the national forest and you can uh, buy and make five 20 acre tracks you know 20 acres is going to sell for more than 100 acres especially if you set it up you know so just little things like that subdividing uh making it look better maybe it's a piece of farm ground that has been let go uh that you can do a lot of improvements with 
to make that income coming up. So you took a property that has no income, which I'm doing on a piece of Missouri right now, zero income, and all of a sudden it's going to have forty thousand dollars worth of income. How much did you just increase the value of that farm? Yeah. So there's yeah, there's things you can do, but you have to be educated about what those things are. So when you say buy right, is that five percent under the market, ten percent under the market, twenty percent under the market in your opinion, fifty percent under the market? I mean, like what is, what does that mean? Well, the more the better, of course. Well, of course. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I mean, fifty percent would be, I think, an extreme good situation. You know, typically, I'm going to say if you can buy twenty percent, twenty to thirty percent under the market, that's good. Uh, usually, you have to pay an agent six, seven percent. You know, whatever it is. Down here, I'm the agent, so I'm paying me, so which yeah. is fine. Um, but you got to calculate that in. Um, if you're not in real estate you better find you an agent. And, 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 and I know everybody thinks they're the best negotiator and stuff in the world, but listen, you go into the doctor's office and a doctor tells you, you need brain surgery, listen to it. You walk into my office and I'll tell you how to sell land. You need to listen. This is what I do. This is what I'm passionate about. This morning when I'm on the way to work, I'm listening to how to negotiate better, how to structure deals better, how to set up systems and processes that make your property sell for more. You're not doing that every day. Mm -hmm. and uh you know oh i'm gonna sell it without using an agent i'm gonna save a little bit of money and you might one time you might two times but if you take them across the board unless you're an outlier which you may be most of the time the agent i'm not talking about every agent i'm talking about the top agents in their field um if i was picking an agent and i didn't know anything about real estate I would call the local MLS board or the local realtor association or RLI or something like that. And I said, give me the numbers of the five people who sell the most in these counties. I'd call them and I'd grill them all because, you know, just because they sell a lot doesn't mean they're a great reputable agent. But in order to get to the top agents, you better get on the top income because the guys, you know, the guys who sell the most, usually one of those guys are going to be the guy you want to work with. Mm -hmm. draw a hard line in the sand just as a general rule of thumb is 20 percent of the market like if someone right now they're thinking i i have i have 20 grand saved up i want to go buy my my first 40 160 you know thousand dollar property do i need to try to get 20 percent under under market or i guess well, what's well, your value return let's 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 okay let's say if you're getting 20 percent of the market let's say you're okay you're gonna make 20 percent on your money um and if you're in the flip business you only flip these properties in less than a year all right, let's say your average flip time is a year. Let's just use that as a gamble. So you're making 20% on your money in a year. All right, so half of that would be 10%. I need to make 10% right now. So if we're talking about 20%, double. And if you slept for less than a year, we're talking about an even higher percentage. So if you can buy 20 to 30% of the market, that's a good deal. And, you know, that brings up another good point. Base hits, base hits win ball games. You never go broke making a profit. So if you get a deal and you know you can make 10%, like, like, oh, this is a no-brainer. I can make 10% of this safe deal. Do it. Um, I bought uh, 67 acres about 15 miles that direction a couple of years ago. Had it for 90 days and made 30 grand. That's not a huge profit, but it was 90 days. Simple, easy, and it's 30 grand. And, you know, 30 grand is still 30 grand no matter how you look at it. You know, you got to look at risk versus re reward. You know, if you're going to buy borrow a million bucks, you know, making 30 grand ain't, ain't a whole lot off of it. You know, so so you got to look at risk versus the reward. Um, and as you do it, you'll get a feel for it. So if you put a property on the market and it's 90 days and you hadn't just, you can tell how much activity you're getting on. You're not liking what you're seeing. You're getting a little nervous. Take a profit, move on. Like that's the game. You know, uh, if you're never going to bro go broke making a pro profit. Hogs get slaughtered and pigs get fat. You know, it's a... Um, just just don't get greedy don't get emotional about it the numbers man just go with the numbers like people you have to remove yourself from the situation and not get emotional about it even though i know it's your hard-earned money you're putting them to it don't get emotional don't matter if you like the buyer or don't like the buyer or the banker or whoever involved with it you're there for your goal is to make money so if you're making money make the money and move on Mm -hmm. That's good advice. Hope you guys enjoyed this. My name is Jake Hofer and I'm a real estate agent out of the state of Illinois. And it's my goal to help 100 people buy their first farm. I've been doing that with the land podcast and clips like this every single Thursday and Saturday that are released here on the channel. And to be one of those 100 people, all you have to do is if you're in the state of Illinois and I can help you, I'd be happy to do so. Number two, 
If you want to get connected with someone that can help you, reach out and I'll be happy to get you in contact with an agent that I would personally do business with. And the last one is if you just simply learn something from the content we're putting out where you get inspired to take action, I want to know, get you out of that spreadsheet. I'm on a mission to help 100 people. Until next time, see ya.